We are live on YouTube. Let's just wait until we get a fair few viewers, I think. Everyone's just coming in from the sun, the last bit of the sun. <laughs> exactly. From the beer gardens. Sod dinner. Let's just quickly go yeah. off and <laughs> get those rays in. Okay, we've got Gary Fletcher watching already. Should cool? we start off then? Or yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, Gary. Got, yeah, I, I think we've got Terrell's arriving a bit later on, so you know, we'll just we'll just crack on from here now. I think. Yeah, fantastic. We were just saying, uh, end of a lovely sunny weekend, and what well, since Saturday last week, that's set seven points. I felt my maths is correct, and uh, what what a way to to celebrate with the beer gardens opening and. Uh, Onwards and upwards, as we were just saying before we went live, to uh, Mr. Graham Stacey, who's joined us from the uh, Don's Trust Board tonight, who uh, only looks up the table, which is what we we like to hear. How are you? <laughs> yes, uh, that's just code for not knowing, having a clue's gone down. And uh, yeah, I just look up the table. But yeah, very well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. And and we're also joined by uh, Matt Harwood, who I actually, in true COVID style, haven't met in the flesh yet. Only met over <laughs> over video calls. So how are, how are you doing, Matt? Yeah, I'm I'm happy the barbers are open. Put it that way. <laughs> would have would have been would have been not good to meet me last week. I look like Chewbacca's brother. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could maybe sign up Chewbacca's brother for next season. I'm sure. Yeah. That's actually on a good day as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, looking sharp, looking sharp. And and Mark, how are you doing? Over yeah, this... surviving very well. Thank you very much. I can't complain. Last time we were due to actually be having a chat i was up in the mountains and the internet failed something chronic yeah. I, I, I recall yeah we lost you about halfway through didn't we no um, not even i think it was within like the first first five minutes and I, I was just sat there on my phone and i was just looking i had full reception but just nothing was working so i just did the proverbial oh you know what sod this i'm just gonna watch i, I still think it was fifa playing with that dodgy Internet oh, connection. absolutely. We Set started probing into topics okay. they didn't oh, want. you can't listen to it. That's it, yeah. Talking it about the subject. It's a football. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sounds quite accurate to me. It sounds accurate to me. So, um, yes, yeah, so obviously, Terrell's joining us a, a little bit later on, which is fantastic, our player, player of the season last year. Um, and like we said, it's seven points uh, in, in the last three games, which, which is huge. And uh, it's been a whirlwind of a week for football generally um but if we're focusing you know just on uh on Wimbledon how we're doing I'd say as it goes possibly the best best week of the season so far uh, results wise what, what do you think uh Graham I think we could have done with three points yesterday sorry not could have done with should have got three points yesterday it was a pummeling um and you know who would have said that about like a couple of months ago that we'd be pummeling Ipswich three nil and then uh and then pummeling them in the in a real pummeling nil-nil. Because um, as nil-nils go, that was, it really wasn't representative, was it? I think we had three pretty clear-cut where you'd have fancied us to score. Um, so, yeah, great week. Good good haul of points. But, um, yeah, three would have been better yesterday, and I thought we deserved it. And I think, I think Rob Robbo said afterwards, didn't he, something along the lines of, you know, you know things are improving if you've gone to Portman Road. And yeah. you're disappointed with a nil now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that they score that many. So that was kind of, you know, that was always, a, you know. But yeah, we, we, we're creating chances. And mostly we've been taking chances recently. And yesterday, maybe it was just, you know, but we still got a point. And yeah, it's not bad. It's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, absolutely. And you don't, you don't want to speak too soon. We don't want to get complacent. Um, mm -hmm. But you, as in terms of absolutely, like you said, points for all, um, this week is, has has been a real help, and and it's an improvement in performances as well, Matt, isn't it? Um, just generally, I think the football's been much more enjoyable to watch in the last couple of months. Um, 
yeah, it's been great. It's been um, a complete turnaround, sort of chalk and cheese to what we were we were seeing before. And it took a little while to, to bed in. Um, and it, it looked like we were, almost looked like we were a bit toothless up front. But then when it clicked, it, it almightily clicked. And, and that was it. And I think we maybe missed a little bit of Palmer yesterday, but not in that first half. We just absolutely pummeled them. But we just didn't didn't make the breakthrough, but that's that's football. <laughs> you win some, you lose some. It's still it's still eleven v eleven on the day. So I don't I don't fall into the we should be smashing everyone or, or the, the attitude that I think even I think their manager had after the game, even about his own side. Who I thought gave him a bit of a performance in the second half, but he uh, he still lambasted them. Yeah, he wasn't very happy afterwards. Was he, Mister Cook? Um, and actually. In some respect, I take some heart from the fact that we uh, had so many chances without Palmer being there. You know, it's not just that we're sort of reliant on one on one player at the moment. Um, and and you know, obviously, in terms of attacking, we've been getting those goals, um, and the options seem to be more av- available to us, Mark. Yeah, um, the thing is, what I noticed though yesterday was. I, I had this gut feeling, firstly, that this is going to be one of those games and there's just, you know, the Wimbledon supporter in me where you're going to go, oh no, you know, all those chances that we've missed, they're going to nick this. And I had a friend round for a barbecue uh, yesterday. He's a, he's a Bradford supporter living here in Switzerland now for about a year. And he was well impressed with our, our play. He was just sat there going, wow, you know, this is, this is, I've never seen Wimbledon play like this. And um, when I spouted to him, you know what, I think they're going to nick this. He just went, yeah, it's one of those games, isn't it? And I just thought, no, no, firstly, you're a friend. You shouldn't say that. <laughs> you should say, no, no, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. But he was very honest. Um, but we were we were lucky. But the other point that I noticed was that the the guys the guys well I say the guys Ayub especially I don't know he had two two wonderful chances in the game and Rudy as well. We weren't that clinical like we were in previous matches. However, I don't want to put any per- pressure on them or anything like that. But maybe they just were a little mentally fatigued, um, and and they were getting to that point of maybe they just need a little bit. A little bit more time um, on the bench, just just to let them refresh. Um, but on that, Terrell has just requested an admission into this group, so I'm going to bring him into it. He's had his rest, um, and then I would <laughs> love to. Uh, I, I'm hoping he's been watching in the background and listening to us um, because I've got a good question for him. Which is going to set us straight off on 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 yeah, what the deal is. You're all right. Yeah, I'm all right. You guys all right? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good evening. Have, thank you for joining have you, us. Have you been listening in at all on the conversation so far? I was watching, but I was a couple of minutes behind, and then obviously, okay. Yeah. Well, we were, we were just talking about the, the match against Ipswich, and it seemed yeah, yeah. like the guys up front, yeah, were, were getting a bit mentally fatigued and whatnot. Let me throw you straight into the lion's den here. Go on. What, what would you say to the you the younger guys? You know your Rudys, your Ayubs. You know who, who, maybe they'll be now thinking about it a bit too much. Maybe thinking about it a bit too much. What would you say to them in the in the dressing room after a match like that? Uh obviously you just say listen. Just don't think about things too much. Just let let things flow. Play your game. We all know what you're good at. Um, so don't don't let if any pressures that you may believe that you are now um, that that you've got as you're now in the starting eleven. Don't let them um, get to you because obviously your football you've played plenty of football games before this. And at the end of the day, it's just another football game. I understand you think oh if if it's your debut for uh, the club that you've gone through the academy with is a big event for you, but it's just a football game. Yeah. So that's something that you just, once once you get the first couple minutes or first five minutes out of the way, then you're okay. But when, when you start getting into the swing of things and you may got a couple starts under your belt and, um, for example, you might have a few chances and you don't take them, just don't let it, there's no need to let it get on, to, to let it get to you at all. 
course we have. Oh, sorry. I was, I was, I was just going to say. Do you think that's the case for the the whole squad in terms of what Robbo is trying to instill? So trying not to, to to overthink and get nerves in the squad and just kind of be yourself and express and play uh, positive. Yeah, that's, that's, big, that's how it comes. That, 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 that is a big thing. The first, uh, the first um, meeting that we had when obviously uh, the change of management went happened. It was something so simple that he was talked to us about. He, Robbo, he brought a ball in and he held the ball up and he said, um, why, why, why did, what was the reason you started playing with this? Why? And everyone was a bit of like a like dead silence in the room because sometimes, you know, with rhetorical, like simple questions, you think, oh, maybe the answer is not that simple. But yeah, no, he just, someone else said that just for enjoyment. That's the first reason why anyone picked up football or any sport I can maybe think, especially a football, is the first reason why they started playing because of enjoyment. And um, he said, you need to allow that eight, whatever, six, seven, eight-year-old in you to always come out, to always be there, regardless of the results, the type of game. Because that's when you play at your probably most best because you're enjoying it. And then from then, that's been like, I think a setting stone for how we move forward in things. And yeah, so that's that. That was a big thing for Robbo's, he the 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 base of when he took over, and it's really it's really helped us because everyone's a, everyone's more relaxed around the um, training ground, train like and it, and and being relaxed it pushes your levels because you when you do when you then drive yourself it's not external things driving you when it's internal. Um, you then start it starts going on to other people and then everyone feeds off of each other's um, energy and then it just creates one piece of cake <laughs> yeah because Amory, Amory mentioned that uh, the post-match interview that Robbo did he, he said you know it's amazing to think that we've come to Portman Road and we've only come away with a point we're disappointed in that yeah. which is which is very cool um, and you know I hate calling cl- other clubs big clubs and, and, and you know small clubs and all that. But right. let's be realistic. Ipswich Town are have got a, a huge amount of history, you know. Yeah, yeah they're, yeah. they're a big club. What let me quickly ask, what 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 big club have you ever played against and you've thought halfway through a match or about a quarter way or even three quarters of the way through a match? Wow, these guys are really distinctly, distinctively average. You know, we can get them. Has there ever, have you ever come across a, a, a team that you're thinking they should roll us over? But actually, you know what? You never go in. No, I've never fought in a game where they're going to roll. You think, oh, they should roll us over? No, 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 no. Prior, or you know, the whole, the whole. Let's say it's a big cup match or something that's leading up. Not saying necessarily, uh, over, but they've got the skills. But you've come against them. Uh, I say, know. obviously, obviously, West Ham when we played them in the cup. Yeah. Obviously, you know, it's Premiership players. They've got some quality there. Obviously, the starting lineup wasn't their, their greatest, but like they had Andy Carroll, they had um, Noble was playing. The centre backs were obviously the, I can't remember at the time, but they were. Ogbonna, playing. wasn't it? Ogbonna. Yeah, they were starting. There were starters. There was a few starters. There was only Dian Garner, I think, on the right, who was young. They had Chichari- Chicharito. But when you start playing, you. Obviously, before the game, you're thinking, oh, it's West Ham or it's a Premier League club. They're going to be sharp. They're going to be a bit sharper. You know those little things. But then once the game starts playing, you just, it just sort of goes and you're just playing. And as I said, as I said, when you speak to the younger boys, you're just playing another game against another, um, another human with two arms, two legs and a head. Yeah. So and, uh, when, when, at, one point, at what point in that FA Cup match did you actually perhaps do cross your mind off Wow, we've actually really rolled one over on them. Was it at the final whistle or was it before then? That's not for me. It was when um, Waggy scored his our third. No, right. Like it went in straight and after like, half time. Yeah, and I was like, oh, we scored again. <laughs> it was weird. I was like, oh my God, like we scored again. It's we're freeing it up. It was a bit of like, 
realization, oh, we're freeing it up and we're playing really well. But even other teams that we've played, there's no team in, in our league that I can say when we're playing, I'm thinking, oh, these like they're 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 they may be better than us, they're quicker, they're sharper, stronger. There's no game like that. It's only before the game, that's how I can say if it's a cup game and you're playing a higher team, you might think that before, but once the game starts going, that all goes. But in the in in the cup match against West Ham, it was like, it was that point when we scored the third goal. I thought, oh, we could actually win this. Like it really, it said, oh no, we could. we're we're on the set on the road to winning this. Obviously, I thought we could win this, but then when you think, oh, we're three 0 up, we're on the road now. But yeah, no, that sort of mentality doesn't really go hit my mind where I think. Uh, because for me, that's your beating already. If you're thinking too much a bit about the other team, cool. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and in terms of, I've obviously we've mentioned about Ipswich, but earlier in the week we had a massive three point skin against Oxford, um, yeah. and obviously when a team goes down to ten, that can have like a positive and negative impact um, because it, it, sometimes that drives them more. Yeah, really, really go for it. Um, from from your point of view, sort of how you, the, the players obviously you know handled that that pressure well and, and kept that confidence up that you were just talking about. So just staying focused. Yeah, no, they handled it. they handled it really well. I think, like um, as sometimes even as a player playing against ten for some reason it's harder. Yeah. Like one of the hardest games of the season has probably been, well, the hardest halves was. I think we was it Blackpool we played at home when they went down to nine men. Yeah. Yeah, I don't was, know why. That was at Loftus Road. Yeah, it's at Loftus Road. Yeah. For some reason, I don't, I don't know why, but it just seemed like they had more players than us, or there was no space, but there was tons of space. Yeah. I can't explain. Like, it's weird. It's just when you go again down against 10, 10 men, if you're playing, someone gets sent off. It obviously it did. It worked. It works in your favor some way, but. In another way, it's like they for some reason they've got an extra five percent and they don't have a they don't have a uh a, a man down. Well, I'm assuming if you are if you are pulled down to 10 men as a team, you aren't really expected to win it anymore, are you? So therefore you're just basically you're on a hiding to nothing in terms of you, yeah, you, I guess, you, yeah, yeah. You can you can go out there and, and perform really well, maybe even get a draw out of it, then you'll be all labeled as heroes. Or yeah. if, you get, if you get thumped, then people will turn around and go, well, they were down to 10 men. Yeah, but regardless, Robbo is always, Robbo, Rob, all the staff, always talking about having the levels high. Just keep doing what we do. Hmm. Keep doing the things that he's trying to implement, the style of play, um, keeping them on the back foot, always recycling the ball, um, make sure our transition's good. When we're attacking, don't be... Um, don't don't be weak on the counter attack. So say we go down the one side, we cross it, they head it out, make sure that we're close enough to maybe collect the ball again or stop them from going on a counter attack. Robbo's so, talked about relentless a lot in his interviews, and we've yeah, seen a lot of it on yeah. there. Is that what is that what he means by that? Is that just being relentless in every yeah, single aspect? Relentless and as in like just keep keep at it regardless. Could be three, four, five, just keep. Please keep um, knocking on the door. No matter what, just keep doing what we do. Because, um, yeah, it's just it's just how his... You can see, even before, with Robbo, obviously we had, I've known him since I've been at the club, speaking to him, his passion and how he wants to play. And the, and the, mental, the mental side of football is a massive... Of sport, not just football. The mental side of sport, I can see, is really a big thing for him. And him going on tours where he's talk about the All Blacks and um, different different sports and the best coaches in different sports, they've all got something in common where there's that relentlessness with their team. And they have that, uh, they have a why of why they're doing it. That was a big thing. And he made our, he made the AFC Wimbledon um club or the family yeah family made the AFC Wimbledon family our why right. and it's like it's dr it's everyone's got it's drilled into everyone and it's like a 
don't know, it's just something different. It's something new. It's because we know everything that's gone on over the since 2000 and since, yeah, since the club form, formed, it's like everyone is everyone understands that fully to the fullest for the to, to the um to 100%. Yeah, they understand that, and that's our why now. Do you understand? And it, and, it, and it comes through in your performances. I managed. So I had myself on mute. I was just saying we need to get that statement on a t shirt to where Wimbledon is my why. Get and they uh, in the club. Yeah, shop. yeah, yeah. Graham, yeah. um, you can you can certainly get the DT to make some t shirts for that. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that. We could do that. <laughs> um, you 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 mentioned earlier about like the players coming in and and you know having that in sort of nervousness for two minutes and that's it out the system. You just sort of came back and the other day after you know a long time out. Do you get nervous? And um, and what was it like? Because um, it must have been amazing to step out at Plough Lane for the first time in well for the first time. Yeah, in a while. Yeah, the last time what was uh, Lincoln? I played the Lincoln game. Was at Plough Lane? Yeah, but yeah, no. We got any game. You go in a tiny bit nervous. If you're not a bit nervous, it's not good because a tiny bit of nerves keeps you keeps you switched on and makes you focus a bit. Obviously, too much nerves ain't good, but if you haven't got no nerves, I think you don't, you can't, there's no really, you don't care enough. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Test, I don't know. You've done all the rever- um, revision, but when you're going in it, you're a tiny bit nervous for your exams because you're thinking, oh, what if I, but yeah, no, of any game, any game you're going with a tiny bit of nerves. Mm-hmm. But it was such a it was it was such a great thing to walk out um onto Plow Lane again. It was like where I was, I didn't really know that I would do it, I'll do it again this season. Mm. I didn't know that. So Brilliant. I just waited and just obviously my recovery was I wouldn't say quicker, but it was wasn't the damage wasn't as bad as they thought it could have been mm. from my illness. Yeah. That's really promising. I mean have you had any other injuries in the past that have taken you out for a period of length of time where this setback has, you've been able to reflect on that longer period of time to go, right, okay, that's how I dealt with mentally, obviously, because, I mean, mental uh, health is no, a very important yeah, Not thing. really, no. I think the longest I've been up before that is maybe like six weeks or something like that. Okay. Yeah, with like, a, I think when I first came, um, I got injured in a, cup match against Charlton in the uh, not Johnson it's not called the Johnson's paint anymore is it it's called the EFL trophy now I got injured and that hurt my knee and then I was out for like six weeks six to eight weeks I think it was but no nothing like nothing like nothing where it's taken me off for that long of time where I've had to reflect and think about how I'm feeling with my injury illness but one thing obviously that did help because obviously I just got a newborn now as well so yeah it's nine months and um he just kept my mind ticking really so kept he was the like, tonic would you yeah, say yeah 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 it just kept how me is, how, how, how are you finding parenthood no I'm enjoying it I'm enjoying it yeah I'm enjoying it every minute really obviously when you wake up three times in the, in the night at the time you're like <laughs> But um, no, when you think about it, you just it's amazing. It's amazing. Like the one, the biggest thing for me is just seeing the development. Like just one day, you just think, oh, you couldn't do that yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the that's the most amazing thing I think about it. It's just you can see this person and just uh, develop slowly, 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 and it's just amazing. It's an amazing thing. So then, would you would you say that you've you've taken any of any of the younger players from our first team squad or, or those knocking on the door? Have you taken any of them under your wing? Uh, no, not personally. No, not personally. I just give my little bits of advice when I think it's needed. But as a group, I say that over twenty four year olds or only over twenty fives, we all do it as together. Like there's no one person we say we take them under their wing because there's not really a younger centre back at the moment. Sometimes okay. in the squad, 
if we're training maybe Oggs sometimes, who's part of the under 18s. If he's training with us, I might give him a bit of advice. Or in the game the other day, at half time, I was giving him some advice on things and how we should play his game and stuff. So but in terms of someone under my wing, it's all people not in my position who's like the younger players. So you've got Rudy, um, obviously Ayub. I yeah, I try through, through the through the time that I, I've been here and I've been training in and out with us, I've given him little bits of advice and stuff like that. And he's a he's a character, but he's um his passion and everything is always there. We've got a question quickly from Stuart. Um you're right, Stuart. You relax, put your head down, you know, you got to take your evening off, watch some more Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. I knew that was um, coming up. But uh, he asks, uh, the high press from the team is really effective at the moment. Um, yeah. How tough is it to perfect it? And how do you practice it during training? Um, it, is, it, is, it is, there's no really, obviously, there's no perfection. But to get it to a good enough um, standard where nine out of ten times we do it correctly it does take some doing on a training ground. More time than not, we'll do it in like a 11 v 11 based game because Robbo's a big per thing on, there's no point doing stuff against mannequins because you're getting false. Uh, what does he say? He says false. Um, you'll get your, you're, you're getting results in the wrong way. Do you understand what I mean? So it's like me shoot, taking a penalty against a, a mannequin and scoring every time. But then when I come onto a game, I'm, there's actually a real person there who's thinking and moving, do you understand? So he's a big thing on that. So like when we're doing shape work, we might not, we don't really do it around mannequins. It's always against an opponent. Whenever he's trying to implement something into the team, he always tries to do it against uh, players so that when it comes to a Saturday, you're used to, um, you're used to pressure. You're used to someone on you, you're used to knowing okay, I can't go left because he's right or I can't go left rather than when you're going to get the ball, someone's passing to you and you're thinking, I'm going left. So with the, with the high press, um, he gives us, he tells us how he wants to do it. But when we, when, when in training, when we're um, practicing the high press and showing people whatever way we want to show them, he lets it run a few times so we can, try and work it out for ourselves and not take it, not take his word literally, but there's some things that he calls non negotiables that listen, you have to do this regardless. Like that's just as a manager, you, you do this, but obviously some is to your own interpretation and interpretation when you believe it's the right time to do it. So it does take a bit of time to, to get it down because it's another thing. It's more, you have to become a lot more dynamic and, and fitter because you're 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 running a lot more. You're not just sitting shuffling left to right, left to right. So so it, that's that's something that will take time as well as getting the fitness rate high enough to to be able to sustain that for a long period of time for for as much of the match as possible. You're not going to be able to keep a high press up for ninety minutes. It could be no one can do that. It, City, no one because the like the it's it's hard to do that for the whole game. So being able to do it nine out of 10 times is something that it does take, it does take some practice. Yeah, it does. But it's always, he tries to, the rubber tries to do it against someone. So it might be obviously got 11 players who potentially might start on the Saturday. We might mix it. Then he'll say, okay, this 11, first 11, you have to try and pass it out from the back. And this, the second 11 have to try and do the high press in a way that I want it done. Do you understand? So that's the, yeah, that's how, that's how we're doing training. Does that suit you? Do you, do you find this new style suits your style? Yeah, I enjoy that. I, I enjoy yeah. that. I don't really like sitting off. is just like waiting for the inevitable. I understand if you're playing a team where there's not many teams that who, you know, if we press them, they're gonna get. They're gonna be. They're gonna be good enough to go bang bang. Get round us. There's no one. There's no one. You can't. There's no one in the league like that. There's no one. So we just think every game 
we can if we put it on them, put pressure, then we're go we're gonna win it back if we do it in the right way. If everyone knows their roles in the right way, then it will work, and it has been working. We won the ball up high, really well, and a lot of the time, and even our counter attack stats are much higher. Mm. Regardless of if it's we won it in the um, defensive third, middle third, or attacking third. So, yeah, that's something that's really worked for us. I love it how you kind of ooze this confidence. I mean, you you started off as a youth team player at Arsenal, right? Yeah. And then you moved on to Charlton, mm. um, but went out on loan a fair few times. Yeah. During your youth time i've got to ask do you did you actually play with any any players that have got become really quite household names for, for one of a bit of phrase um obviously at charlton there's a few obviously it's joe gomez um carl and Hern grant is at west brom now uh adam ola lookman he's at fulham on loan from i think Isaac. he's on loan yeah i think he's on loan yeah um, yeah, there's a few actually from Charlton, from Arsenal. Obviously, there's Alex Awobi, who's wow. um, Chuba Akpom, who's now at Middlesbrough. He went, he done a, he done the double, and was a, a um, invincible in Greece with Poak. Um, yeah, there's quite a few actually. There's quite a few players that. I can say that I've played with in teams for quite some time who who are doing well in the game now, who are quite uh, household names. Okay. Yeah. In, term, in terms of players uh, sort of at youth level who, who've come through and done well for themselves in the game, I don't know if you saw uh, the, the video, uh, Terrell, of the um, the boys surprising Mark at, uh, at his home. Uh, from no, the 2015-2016 squad, is that right? No, I, mean, no, I haven't. Oh, I should definitely give it a watch. He, I mean, they, they they spoke to him about it. He was obviously commentating on your um, return match against Ballum. Um, and Robbo was too, so he was too emotional to talk about it. It really meant a lot to him. Um, I don't know if anyone else saw that clip. I thought it was really cool. Uh, I, really I, nice. oh, I haven't seen that. I'll have to, I'll have to search that or get yeah, it from yeah. Few of the old youth, youth players um, just wanted to thank him and, and sort of wish him luck going forward. It was yeah, really, really nice. Um, okay. Yeah, fantastic. I'll ask him about that. Kept that one quiet. <laughs> it sounds like him, though. He's a very modest man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Matt, did you have any any questions um, sort of either about the Oxford game or Ipswich game or just um, you know returning to football for Terrell in, in general? Yeah, I wanted to just one check, first of all, check how he was how he's doing, how he's feeling, um, and how he plans to break back into this 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 defensive lineup. Um, no, I'm feeling good. I'm feel, obviously I still need to play some more minutes. I think they're trying to get the next round of the that cup, the London Senior Cup, this for this week coming, so I can get more minutes. Obviously, me and um, Shayon as well need to get some minutes under our belt because he's been out for a while. And I've been out for a bit longer, so yeah, that's just that's that's just my thoughts. There's only a few games left, but um, the, the the defense as a team, regardless of the back four, the two centre backs, it's been the last six seven games has been really good. We've been sound in defense, and it's a thing where that because we are implementing our ourselves on teams, we don't have to defend as much. So we don't have to do as many last ditch tackles or passing overs or there's not there's not there's more there's less times where something can go wrong. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're only defending five times. Well, five times think five times something could go wrong, but before it could have been twenty times. Yeah. So you've that's got, something. Yeah. You you've got um one of those games is against Portsmouth, and of course you've got history against them. So. Maybe, yeah. uh, maybe then maybe that might be a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Your, that's your yeah. that's your only goal. Yeah, I got that. And oh no, Charlton in the cup. Well, the only yeah, the oh, only league did. goal really. The only yeah. league goal, yeah. Yeah, only league goal, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, the, the team's doing really well. Everyone's 
everyone's loving it at the moment. And did, um, you, did you and Shay on because you were coming back from injury together? So was that kind of you get your chance to sort of get to know him a bit more? Yeah, it gave me a chance. Yeah, it definitely gave me a chance. Yeah, because um, I was in hospital when he came, and uh, yeah. when I did come back, people were saying, "Oh, he was looking really sharp," and before he got injured, so it's a shame. And then doing training with him, doing some little drills, like uh, there's something that we have to do, like a 1v1 in a small area with mini goals. It's quite, it's tough. It's like you do it for a minute and rest for a minute 15. And you can see that he's he's quick, he's sharp, he's got good feet, he's left foot, he's got a good left foot. And yeah, it really did give me a chance. We got, we got close together and got through our rehab um, doing the same things really. So it gave us a bit of a bond. Um, and obviously, uh, there's there's been a lot going on in football this week. Um, there's been a lot of coverage on that, you know, with everything um, at, at Premier League level and the way that you know there's there's lots of different commentary on on where football's going, um, sort of as an industry. And I'm just wondering, um, sort of from your point of view, I know Robbo talks a lot about values based uh, a club, and yeah. I, I'm building up from there, and I can hear it in what you're talking about. You. you completely bought into that which is fantastic but getting towards the end of the season um obviously I know we're able to talk too too much about about this in depth but with regards to, you know players um coming and going uh in in the modern game even you know at league one level what kind of things you know really sort of influence um decisions people make really I guess in terms of transfers in or out or, or, or staying at clubs, not staying at clubs? Um, what kind of thing are people looking It's probably the same thing at any level, really. Yeah. You just want to see ambition from the club that you're at and you want to see the potential progress because if there is a higher level to go to in any field of life, you want to go to that level. Yeah, definitely. Regardless of what it is, if it's football, if it's teaching, anything, you want to be able... You, you, if you believe in yourself to get that um, managerial job, if you're uh, working in a in, in, in a shop, you want to get to that. Do you understand? So you have your if your ambitions then fit on a, an honest a bit honest answer. If your ambitions go tie in with the club's ambitions, then that's when you can say yeah, it fits together. But if your ambitions and your um, realistic ambitions, obviously you need realistic ones that you know you think you can gain or goals, don't really tie into where um, you are at the moment or where you could be in the future, then obviously that can sway your opinion. So that's something as a player, someone in any industry can say that, do you understand? And that has an effect on whether, say, for uh, it's always been an Arsenal player for some reason, say, I want to win the Champions League. So um, Thierry Henry goes to Barcelona. So I want to win the Champions League. Cesc Fabregas leaves. Um, I'm an Arsenal. I was an Arsenal fan. So, well, uh, kind of an Arsenal fan. So that's why I picked up Arsenal. <laughs> no, good examples. Uh, yeah. Good examples. And you're absolutely right. Like, uh, it, especially within footballers and athletes, um, people will drive towards those 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 goals and ambitions. That's, that's what the driver is for for any athlete um uh yeah so in terms of your own personal ambitions um to you know towards Wimbledon towards life towards football um would you disclose um, or do you tend to keep them close to your chest my own personal obviously you want to believe that one day you can play in the Premier League that's the biggest one as I'm 25 now so whether that's in the near future or when I'm 32, do you understand? So, but for me, it's always about if it's a place where I'm enjoying myself, I understand, and the Robo has put that sort of into place where it's like, it's more than just football club. It's like, a, we're, we're a family, like we have a group called the AFC Wimbledon Family on, um, on WhatsApp. And it's literally everyone's there from ground staff to kit man everyone's in there saying their bit whether um he something about the don's local action group um can you come and help that um 
anything really. So it's something he's created a a family. You can say that. Oh, be honest. Family. Who's the one who sends the funniest gifts? Um, pigs. Well, pigs tries. He tries. <laughs> Probably pigs, yeah. Pigs does he, he? He loves a bit of um. One thing that goes on a bit is that obviously the older staff, somehow I don't know, pigs or Ollie, find you know everyone's got that Facebook picture from 2012 that they didn't want anyone to see. <laughs> somehow he gets it and puts it in the group and then says a funny caption towards it and we'll laugh. And, but it's that sort of vibe. Anyone can we all take the mick out of each other here and there, but. It's all driven towards one, one thing. Do you understand? Like we, we, everyone's comfortable with each other. So I don't know if you can hear my little one's crying. Sorry. If you need to shoot off and go, you that's know. right. It's right. His mom's with him. Okay. Right, cool. But yeah, no, yeah. So that's the sort of vibe that has been created. You just you mentioned how ambitious you are, and um, how ambitious do you do you think as a club we are? Amb- Wimbledon is ambitious, and what should our ambitions be? Do you think? Um, I think that from when I, when I first joined the club, I could see around, regardless of the pit, what's going on on the pitch, that the club's main future short-term goal or f- was to get to Plough Lane. So that was an ambition. That was something you can't really... As a new player coming, coming in, you understand it's something it means... Um, a massive lot to uh, the club that you've joined Mm -hmm. and you respect that, but you can't from the beginning anyways, from the beginning, when you join, you can't share it. You can't share that ambition straight away. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Because the people like Ivar and they're born and bred and Wimbledon's through their veins. And Mm -hmm. I can't say that I was back then when I first joined, I understood the history and I understood and I really uh, recognised it and it was something that I I felt, I sort of fell in love with the story, you understand, and became a fan, became became a Wimbledon fan slowly because of the way I see the club was run and the fans. But the the ambition now, I can say that, I can see that because we've got the set in stone of, everyone, we're back home now, Mm -hmm. now it's like, we need to kick on now. Can we get to that? Can we get a playoff spot? Can we get to that champ? Can we get to the championship? Which is which I believe is doable. Yeah. With um the way Robbo's doing things and the players, the way he wants to play, and yeah, that's but obviously there's so many things in football that can um come in between that you and that ambition. Mm-hmm. You never know what can happen with the could be financial it could be something you don't know because football is a topsy-turvy thing so we've now got our set piece coach Andy Pozzo in and he's 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 doing good I've got to get say I mean, for yeah. once in, in in a very long time it feels as fans you know we're like wow you know we really stand a chance of scoring every time we've got a corner yeah it's great gotta ask you if you could score a hat trick in a match to win comfortably or a last-minute one-nil winner. What would your choice be? Take the ball home, or savor the moment? Definitely that moment because I felt that moment with Portsmouth. Yeah, yeah. Can't take. No one can take. There's something that every footballer's probably say. That moment when the when the you hit it and it hits the back of the net, you shoot or it hits the back of the net. The first, I'm I'm saying that ten seconds. No one can take that away from you. No one can take that that moment, that feeling, and because you, it's just a feeling of everyone's eyes on you, and you did it. Yeah, <laughs> it's there's a bit. I wouldn't say selfish, but it's just that there's not really much in life that can give you that feeling. Like every, the other things, they give you amazing feelings, like the birth of your child or getting a new job or stuff like that. But that feeling of when you score, if it's a last minute winner, like. For example, the biggest one, imagine, I don't know, if there was a monitor on Troy Deeney's uh, chest or brain waves or something like that when he scored that goal against um, Leicester in that playoff semi-final, yeah. it'll be through the roof. There's nothing else that probably could take him to that height. 
but definitely, I'll definitely choose the last minute winner. It's nice. It's nice to take the ball home and that, but it's not really my job to score hat tricks. Pigs will, pigs might say. Oh, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, at the moment, we're looking pretty dangerous from set pieces. Yeah, we are. I mean, we are. You could. We are. Yeah, we got um, Andy is. Yeah, he's really. It's opened my eyes a bit to so many things in football. Not not so many things, but that side of football because there's little things that he says that make sense and you don't think about. Um, like when on corners, he talks about um, your run up, when you should start running. Um, you got more. The, the, the statistics are that when you're moving um, before the ball's in play, that you get to the ball um, first more often. Something with throw-ons, if you take a throw-on within the first five seconds, you're more likely to retain the ball. That's a stat. And I'm like, wow, that's that's weird. That's, that's, um, that's, that, that's a good thing to think on. So when you're on the, on the pitch, you might think that. So if it's a throw-on, you think, oh, let me get it quick. Because they switch off for a tiny bit. Yeah. The other team will switch off. Uh, so it gives you time to get the ball in play and play on. Or in a corner, he says, you should start making your run forward at a certain time. When the player does, when the corner taker makes his last step backwards and first step forwards, that's when you should accelerate. Because then you meet the ball at optimum speed. And all. there's so many things that he says that I've never thought about. And a lot of that ties in with what you were saying with the high press training. So like just reacting to what's in front of you, reacting yeah. to the situation. Um, so obviously complements general training um, mm. by the sounds of it. Um, would, you, would you agree in terms of like just generally as a whole picture that the set piece coach is sort of fitting in with, with what, what Robbo's trying to do? Yeah, it fits in because it's detail, end of the day. Mm. Like you think I've heard stories of other teams, I don't know, like, uh, there was a coach that I spoke to that said he went to watch when Pep was at Barcelona, he went to watch a session and they've got like a pitch with loads of squares on it, loads of squares. So when when the ball's in one square or out their player have got the ball in one square, this is where every of uh, this is the squares where everyone should be or everyone should move to. So it's just detail, fine details on little things. If you can make your detail more on your approach to a, a corner, then why not? Do you understand? Um, if you're running through on goal and there's a stat that says, listen, if you fake to the left and shoot right, you've got more chance of shooting, scoring, then like people say, it's low and hard because statistically it's harder or physically it's harder for the keeper to go down and save it with his hand rather than uh, middle, like mid middle of his chest. So those things do really help. Any little detail that you can think of um, ca that can help your game, you should really take it into account. Some people might think, oh, I don't need this set, I don't need this set piece of guy. Just get it in there and run in. And if you get it, you get it. But there's someone out there that thinks, oh, that will look at something and be like, oh, I can make this detailed. I can get better detail out of this. You sound like a coach, Terrell. Is that... Yeah. Is that something? You, yeah, is that something? Uh, I don't mind. I wouldn't mind. Co I wouldn't mind coaching, but I just love uh, sport. So let me quickly ask. I mean, you know, you got this passion. You got this enjoyment, serious enjoyment. It's obvious you, the way you're exuding it. It's yeah. like this is excellent. I love it. You tweeted a while back your joy at getting a PlayStation 5, if I'm not mistaken. All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the first day of a games console you ever owned? And can you remember what the first game that you played that the got first, you hooked into gaming? The first game console I had was a Super Nintendo. Cool. I think it was before the Nintendo 60... What was it? Was it yeah, Nintendo the N64? 64. I think it was the one before that. It was grey... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Super Nintendo. Yeah, that was the first one, but I can't remember. Probably Street. I might have been Street Fighter. I still got. I still still there. It probably still works. It's at my parents' house in the loft Seriously, somewhere. Keep hold yeah, of it. You can get some work. serious money for it in the yeah, future. It definitely still works. I probably just need to blow in between. Like you have to do that when it wasn't working. You blow the inside. cartridges. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why dust. When there's dust, it does. It wouldn't work, but it seemed to work. But yeah, no, the Super Nintendo was the, the, the first console. But the one that really made me fall in love was probably PlayStation 2. Okay. 
Yeah, that's when like game gaming like that now that's not it's not around anymore. Just literally you and your brother or you and a friend playing two player on a on a story mode game. It's not obviously gaming they've 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 made things more come to life. They've made a lot of stuff come to life, like people's fantasies come to life, like I don't know, the new Star Wars game is come to life, but that sort of let that fun side of thing is sort of gone to 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 gaming. Yeah, I mean, I, I went through because I, I, I'm I'm living in Switzerland, so yeah. I, I watched in all the games anyway through through I follow, and I'm not going to lie, it's been really tough actually watching matches with no fans in in, in the stadium. Um, I don't want to necessarily go on to the conversation because my personal feeling is that the conversation about fans not being in the stadium has been done to death. We know it's difficult for you guys as players and everything. Yeah. But approximately, I would say about three, four months ago, I got into actually starting to play FIFA again for the first time in I don't know yeah. how many years. And I kind of resonated with that game considerably more because there were crowds in that game and they were getting excited about my attacking play and my defensive yeah. play and things like that. And that was kind of kept me going a bit. Do you do you play FIFA yourself? Do you have other players? Not anymore. Play I don't play. I don't. I don't play it anymore. No. I've got a vendetta against EA Sports. That's why. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, then PES. Uh no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't have, find it much enjoyment anymore from um, sports games. I, I used to just do a career mode on FIFA because. A load of my friend, all uh, loads of my friends would do it. So, I would start off with a career mode with like a, a low, a middle prem, middle prem team, and then I would do like a career mode with a, a league two team, um, to get them to the prem. Right. But it's just that I don't know. Sports games they just don't really give me a, what they're not as enjoyable as they once was before. Right. It's not the fun side of FIFA is sort of gone because it's all about ultimate team. If you know about FIFA ultimate team and stuff like that. Well, I don't. To be honest with you, I yeah, just play yeah. online yeah. against some random kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, when, those days when it was like 2012, 2013, it was fun to play online and the gameplay was fast. But now there's so many technical things and it's just all it, it's all driven towards ultimate team because they make so much money off it. Right. Ultimate team is like um, you... You, you're the manager, but then you can have a player from anywhere. You can have any player from any um, country in your team. Right. So I could have left back Danny Rose, then centre back for Ran, then Sergio Ramos. But there's so many things that make your teams better, and so many different cards. And to get the good cards, you have to put money in. That's what that's that's my vendetta. Right. And even if you put money in, you might not get the good players. This is all like a foreign language to me, but I've 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 just got a PS5. About six months yeah. after you managed to get one, I don't know how you got one because I every day I was like refresh, refresh. They got one about a week ago. Don't get it at all. And um, my my little guys, they're eight, yeah. so they're like peak PlayStation yeah. age, I think. But we've been playing Miles Morales. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it looks great and stuff, but I'm like I'm just getting myself. Yeah, those, up, that's so, yeah. the games that I'm into now. That's the games I play now. I just play like story mode games or um as you call them uh role play rpgs yeah yeah, yeah, RPGs. yeah. Have you played sack boy yet sack boy yeah no no look it up honest god excellent voices on the on the game are voiced by rich d grant and dawn french so oh, they, okay. had some, they had some serious money for the production yeah. I look, sack boy. It's a great game. I just I, I played it recently and I just got sucked into it so it's a wonderful yeah, that's the sort game. of that's the sort of gaming I like. Like for now, I play. I played my. I played both Spider-Man games, God of War, um, like um, Last of Us games like that, where I can just pick up and play when I want. I don't have to. Another thing with FIFA: if you miss a weekend, you have to avidly play it all the time to be able to keep up with getting the best packs and best packs, and it's just tiring. I don't have. The, I don't have them. I can't be bothered. So uh, I just look want to look up, up Sack Boy. It's yeah, I will. I will. Game. I look up Sack Boy. I look up Sack Boy. So I'm yet to do a. I might. I, I'm yet to do a, a Wimbledon career mode. So I might. Oh no, I did. I did one time. I did do. A, did I do? I think I did do a Wimbledon career mode. The first. The first year I was here. Did we yeah, do? the first year. Yeah. What was funny is, 
So the first year I was here, um, I did a Wimbledon career mode and um, my player coming to ask me, <laughs> he said he wanted a new, um, I tried to offer a new contract or something like that. And he said, oh, um, I don't want to sign right now. I'm looking to leave. So I, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, so I released the player. So I released myself. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the only time in life that you can ever actually say the phrase, I released myself. <laughs> it's a Sunday. <laughs> it's, it's post-watershed. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I actually did do a win with the career mode. I think I got to like my first year in the Premier League and uh, I only had like Toby Civic left, I think, from the originals. So... If you could sign any player in real life to play for Wimbledon, would you know? Would you know? Budget who? realistically, budgetly realistically. <laughs> Come on. Or know. unrealistic budget, whichever. So many good players. Uh, obviously, there's Messi and Ronaldo. You got to pick one of them. But at the same time, it's like. Or someone you think you'd enjoy playing alongside, maybe, maybe not. Uh, someone I would enjoy playing alongside. It's hard. Pro- probably. Uh, I don't know why I've got become fond of playing alongside as a partner, centre back partner. I'll say Marquinhos for PSG. I don't know. He just seems like he's just the gladiator. Can I, can, I take, can I take that question that Amory could put? One of my favourite go-to questions always to a footballer is, if you could have played alongside anyone in any generation, so even if they're retired, who would it have been? Alongside anyone? Yeah, so even if, if they're playing now, you said Marquinhos, but if it was a retired player, who would, who would you have loved to be able to play next to? Like directly next to or in the same team? No, directly next to, in the sense, in the middle, middle, middle. Um, retired or not, centre mids or. I didn't see much, I only saw little clips and I heard amazing things. So, um, Maldini probably. Okay. Because yeah. I, I was probably, it was probably just before me, but I've just heard he was just. Amazing. And then maybe Xavi in the midfield, just so I can pass to him and just let him do his thing. Well, okay. So, well, then if I may, with my final question, I'm going to have to well, pass on to my, uh, Matt and then Graham one more time. And then we'll yeah. let you go. No, that's fine. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> if you had a chance of applying your trade in any foreign league, which league would appeal to you the most? Outside of the UK, obviously. Uh, wow. Mark, you sound like an agent. <laughs> Probably. Uh, oh, I'm so far away from being an agent. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe France. Wow, okay. Yeah. Obviously, there is Spain, but I just... I watch a bit of the French League, that's why. Okay. Yeah. It's on BT, so I just catch it and I watch it. I don't just watch PSG, like what I, and I like, I just like, so I, I enjoy watching it. So, yeah, probably France. Okay. I like the fact that Mark says he, he, he's not an agent, but he's got a Swiss bank account now. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, my question would be, yeah. Have you got any superstitions before a game? Are you are you that kind of player? Do you do you have a certain pair of boots? Oh, or do you have a certain really, meal no. you have to have? Do you do you have any of that, or is it not not your bad? No, I really have superstitions. I don't. I don't. I, I just don't think that is something that makes an effect. What's your? Is, do you have a, a, like a meal before the game? Like, is there is there a preferred? One yeah, that obviously. Yeah, there's a standard. You just try and get as many carbs as you can, really. You have to eat, try and eat around three hours before the game, three to three to two and a half hours before. So you just have the pastas, bread. bread. Um, I say, put it this way, pre-match, see the pre-match meal. You would never, ever have that 
palate anywhere else. Never. Because on your pre-match meal palate, on your plate, you probably have pasta, baked beans. You could have pasta, baked beans, scrambled egg, chicken, <laughs> and salmon, all on one plate. Wow. And you would never, you'd like, you would never have that. Anyway, you could, I could, I couldn't go to a restaurant and be like, "Yeah, can I have the pasta and scrambled eggs, please?" <laughs> <laughs> or like, pasta, pasta and an omelette. You could have like a ham and cheese omelette with pasta and baked beans. And Sounds like, like, my like before, heaven. before when obviously when we was at um, Lofters Road, we wasn't having no having no pre match, so obviously I had to do it myself. And I would make it. I would just do pasta, baked beans, scrambled egg, and if we had like chicken the day before. If we had minced today, minced meat the day before bolognese, I'll put it all on one plate, and my um, other half would be like, "That looks so disgusting! Like, why did you eat that?" Like, this, I don't see it. I don't see it as food. I just see it as fuel. It's just what I need. But yeah, that's something I can say. The pre-match meal for a sportsman or a footballer, you wouldn't have it anywhere else. I would never. I wouldn't order it, or I wouldn't even ask for it. Thinking about it, it actually is a bit. It's a rubbish meal, but you get what you need from it. I think a fair few fans uh, used to uh, carb load before matches over at Fat Boys. Sometimes in, <laughs> in liquid form of carbs. But <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah. Graham, was there anything else you wanted to, to ask? Before yeah. 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 I, w- I wanted to show you something because it's just landed on my desk. But... Um, when the um, Ballum game was on, my I, I said I wanted to watch it, and I said like I sort of explained to my daughter that you're coming back, and she did you a card. Oh. So um, oh, there you go. I thought I'd wave that up, <laughs> but um, I think it just I think it just says get well soon. But you're back. Yeah. So it was a bit it was a bit late, but um, I didn't want to go into too much detail. Oh no, tell us the thanks. It's great. I will, I will do. I will. Do. She's supposed to be in bed, but um, what I did want to ask was um, we've mentioned like players you'd love to play alongside, past and yeah. present. With the current side, with Wimbledon, who would be your five-a-side team? Five-a-side? Yeah. I want, I'm more interested in who you're going to leave out. I'd have, uh, so <laughs> obviously, me. I'd have me. I'd have Coxie and goal. Oh. Um, Coxie over Tans? I don't know. I just feel like Tans is more... I don't know. I just... Maybe ta- maybe Coxie's yeah. a bit better beat. I can say that. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tans is a beast in the air. Like, you can jump yeah. over a gate if you wanted to. You'd probably do high jump if you wanted to, but yeah. But um, yeah, so I had me, Coxie. Yeah. Um, Ayub. Um, what's that? It's free. <sighs> centre mid. Need a centre mid full player. That's high praise for Ayub. New newcomer, really. Yeah, but is that impressive. He just is. because he's <laughs> he's just a he's annoying, and I don't want to <laughs> play against. Him. I wouldn't want to play against him. Like everyone knows, he's just a, but he's got good feet. He's good in tight situations, and he's just got those street skills. Yeah. Uh, so me, yeah, me, Coxie, Ayu, that's a young team. Um, midfield. I'll go. I I'll go Ant if he was here. Mm-hmm. Um, one more. Still young. Uh, Nesta. Nice. Nesta, oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's a small-sided game, so I need I need sharp players. I don't need I don't need anyone to hold the ball up. Mm-hmm. So, sorry, pigs and Ollie. I don't need that. <laughs> Fair enough. Nice, nice lineup. Cheers. Yeah. So I think yeah, that's a good team. Yeah. When Pigs and Ollie were on, I know it got a bit it got a bit heated, I think, over their two very different team selections. Oh, okay. I can't remember for the life of me who they did end up picking, but yeah, there was quite a bit of two in and fro in. So it's yeah, always, they were, always they a good were question. Arguing, like an old married couple, <laughs> weren't they? Yeah, they do all the time. <laughs> all the time. That's good. Luke, well, um, the trio the trio the arguing trio is Luke, he, um Ollie and Pigs always doing something. That sounds like a close knit family. So, before we let you go, can I get a prediction from you for the match against Rochdale? Um, I 
will score more than three. I can tell you that. Okay. I can tell That's you that. Cool. Because okay. I, the reason why I say that is because the last time we had built up frustration of not scoring chances, who did we play? We won four. Did we score four one? The Accrington. Five one was Accrington. Five one, yeah. 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 So, but the game before that was um, Fleetwood. Carlton. Fleetwood. We lost. We should yeah. have. We lost the game before, but we should have scored maybe four again. And that built up energy has come from Ipswich. And I just feel like. I feel like. Um, yeah, it's, it's ready to explode. Cool. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Be the hat trick. Say again? It's going to be that hat trick you were talking about earlier. Yeah, maybe so. so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for, for spending your right. Sunday evening with us. We really appreciate it. Right, and it's it. so, so good to have you back. Yeah, it's good to be back. Well, it's been one hell of a road, but thank God that um, everything's good. So, quick, quick question do you, do you know who you're playing against uh, in the London Senior Cup? I think it's Dagenham, some. Not Dagenham Redbridge. It's just, I okay. think. Think. I'm not sure where it's at though. I, I think it's planned to be away, but we're going to try and sway them to get a plough lane because we wouldn't want to play play there. Not too right. I mean, plough lane is like the best stadium in London, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, it's a great, it's a great ground, great ground. We'll, we'll all be tuning in watching that and cheering you on even though we're not not there in the flesh but um, no, no, it's yeah. it's but there is going to be a obviously there's the test event which will be good mm. it's 18th of May I think that is so yeah. it's, it's a thing that you only have 2,000 or 1,000 but at least it's something yeah we can certainly make a lot of noise and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, with, that, with those numbers um yeah, that would be, be fantastic to get on and, and hopefully start moving things forward. Mm. Uh, absolutely. But uh, yeah, you you take care. And if obviously, if you need to to, to shoot off uh, for the little one. Yeah, uh, I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, the moanies, ready to sleep. <laughs> Bless him. Yes. You all right? <laughs> oh, he's moaning. Bring him along to the test event and he can make lots yeah. of noise for us. Yeah, yeah. And put him yeah, on, I'll make him commentate with um, Rob. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be brilliant. So we need to arrange that to happen then. Graham, yeah. that's your next job. <laughs> um, <laughs> um. <laughs> Super. Right, yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you, well. thank and, you very uh, much. Take care. Good yeah. luck with the rest of your build-up to get back into the first team. Yeah, cheers. Right, cheers, Terrell. All right, take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. So that went on for considerably longer than I was anticipating. <laughs> um, shall we move quickly on to any other business and then let Graham and Matt disappear because they've got other things to do, no doubt. Um, Graham, please enlighten us. Is there any DT news? Oh, <laughs> news. Um, well, we just had a lot of meetings. I can tell you that about three in the last week, I think. Um, one was our regular monthly meeting, catch up and so forth. Um, a couple of finance and governance meetings. So, um, yeah, I won't go into those too much. <laughs> um, we, we've got stuff coming up, though. We've got the Don's Trust SGM coming up on the 28th, which is right. about, what is it now? Oh, crikey, in a few days. Um, it really isn't a few days, it's 25th, yes. So the agenda and the papers and everything, there are four resolutions, they're all on the Don's Trust website. So check them out there. If you want to vote by proxy because you can't make it on the night, I think you have to vote very soon <laughs> um, to get there by the 20, by noon on the 27th, I think it is. So you've got, well, post it tomorrow overnight, <laughs> first class. Um, if you want to do proxy, but you can, of course, vote on the night. It'll be on Zoom. Um, but there's a, a voting function that we've used the last few. Uh, four resolutions mainly relating, if I remember, to the PLC. Um, 
what else are we doing? Oh, we just did a, a, a survey of the junior doms. So we've got the results and they're being sort of chewed over. And that's the exciting thing about that is it will have very sort of tangible results at Plough Lane because we are looking to create a kids zone. Um, and how that is shaped will be sort of dependent on the feedback we get from the junior dons and you know they're, they're sort of telling us what they want to see at, at games um, because it's not all about fat boys and beer and <laughs> and there's other things you know so um so yeah that's um so that's that's going to be coming up soon I think the the results of that and we'll have a few announcements um there just a tidbit few... about the junior dons thing yeah, I received yeah. that letter three days ago which if you will been. live in this sunny, mountainous, chocolate-laden climb. <laughs> no, apparently, apparently it is because the Royal Mail and the it's Swiss postal system are completely overwhelmed at the moment. Right. But just so you know. And that is good. That's good to know, actually, because there's there is something, there's like, you know, there's safeguarding issues with junior dons. So yeah. we can't do things as we would, you know, um, for an SGM email out. I think it's 95% of things go by email. Yeah. Um, and post costs the Don's Trust a bit of money because it does add up over the course of the year because it's about mm -hmm. a person and then there's a hundred what, people, whatever, whatever. And some people live overseas who probably, <laughs> um, but no, um, but we can't, I don't think we, I think we can email parents, but it's, it's very, you know, the whole safeguard, there is an issue there. Um, that is good to know though. Do I will, well, I can pass that on and find out if there's anything we can do about that because um, that was, that was a fair time ago that those went out. Like even allowing for over here, you know, things are taking a while. Um, you know, my my steps album hasn't arrived, and I ordered that about a month ago. So, oh uh, crikey, I sent my I sent my niece a birthday present, and her birthday was a month and a half ago. She still hasn't got it. Yes. So there is there are things that we really can't control. <laughs> exactly. I, know, I mean, I you know what? I'll, I'll keep an eye. Babe, if if you can be so kind as next time something happens with the junior dons, drop me mm -hmm. a note. I'll keep an eye. Obviously, yes, when I'll let you know when it goes, and then I can give you a rough idea. Yeah, how yeah, 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 it. yeah. See, I wouldn't have known that, and no one at the Don's Trust would have done. Yeah, they had this conversation, I suppose. Um, so yeah, it's always just to anyone who's watching and stuff. It's always worth letting us know because we sometimes we muck up, sometimes we don't, and it's not you know something we can do much about. But sometimes we can look to sort it out for the next time. So uh, in this case, we we'll certainly keep an eye on it. On behalf of the junior dons, I just want to say chocolate laden mountain at Plough Lane would be um would be on my feedback form. So uh, just, a, write, just a log out for Chris. Quite a lot, aren't I? Um, some things we can do. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but if everyone's you know if everyone signed up for it, so yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just load the Tesla full of chocolate right yeah. and drive it over. It'll be the oh, Willy Wonka. Right, 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 right. Gets in the Tesla, loads it up full of Swiss chocolate. Drives up a mountain, has a bit of a ski. By the time he gets back, it's sunny down the bottom. It's, like, it's not a bad life, that. <laughs> no, it's not a bad life, is it? <laughs> Checks his phone and Terrell Thomas has just scored a hat trick against Rochdale. So oh, everyone's yeah. happy. Uh, fantastic. Is there anything else? Any other business or? Yeah, just a, just a quick one. Um, I mean, we could talk about the Super League, but that died to death as quick as anything um and i think it's, it's been spoken quite a bit especially on on last uh, thursday friday's podcast with nick and Stu. they they covered it really well um the last piece of aob for me is is well swindon and bristol rovers have gone does anyone have any picks for the final two spots I'm hoping it's Rochdale and Northampton, but to be honest, I'll take anyone but us. I'm with Matt. I couldn't have said it better. I mean, uh, with, yeah. Aren't Rochdale the team that haven't been relegated from League One for God knows how long? Or was that someone else? Well, they were relegated the other year, wasn't it? <laughs> was it? So, so Rochdale it used, to, used to hold a record, I think, for being sort of stationary in League Two for something... Mm -hmm. Crazy number of years. They kept escaping, and then yeah. they didn't. Yeah. But yeah. Eventually, they did. Yeah. Did get relegated. Okay, I must miss that. But yeah, they certainly did hold that record for a long time because it was sort of known as the most the most boring team because they God, just stayed stationary. God, they're not but... going to repeat it. <laughs> but okay. I think yeah, if we if we're winning three 0 there, I, I thought you know a draw would be okay for us and not. But they're going to really come at us, aren't they? 
because I, as I understand it, looking at the table, having looked below us for the first time in six months, um, if they draw, they're pretty much down, subject to not, you know, scoring 12 goals in the next game and us conceding 15 or something. But um, so they are really win or bust. But yeah. So, you know, they'll be bidding their goalkeeper up for the last 10 minutes at corners, I imagine, and so forth. Um, well, I think that was that will on, suit man. us. I think that will suit us. I think them coming at us, I think will suit us down to the ground. Yeah, yeah that's true. I think I think we we we've we've found that edge really good well defensively, and I really believe that we hold that we have a real attacking threat now for the first time in what two months. Certainly over the past five games, um, so I, I I think I think you know, I think we'll be all right. It'll be good fun to watch. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to watching the game for the first. For, for, the last five games have been great. Actually, you know yeah. what I like. The Accrington match, I didn't watch I on purpose because I was really not, I was really unhappy about what happened against Fleetwood. And then the Accrington match came up and I thought, bogey team, don't like them. Not that I don't like them personally. I think they're, you know, Andy Holt's a great guy and mm. team's doing really well. And then, you know, I get the BBC News BBC Sport thing, bang! They've scored, and I just thought to myself, right, I'm putting my phone in my pocket. I'm not. I'm not even going to. No, nope, not happening. Um, and then that evening, we were hosting a dinner with some friends, and then I pulled out a phone. I completely forgot about it. looking at my phone. Whatever, pulled it out. Final score five one. I just thought, out of all the matches that I could have missed, <laughs> after after following the team thick and thin. <laughs> <laughs> I missed this, Oops. and that's that. That got me right back into it, and then obviously watched the for the, the the next three four games um, uh, with with real excitement. And it's it's great to watch again. It's I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's it's amazing how different these. I, mean, I thought we looked good at the beginning of the season, to be fair, um, yeah. with like McLovin flying up the wing and all that, and you know piling forward, and then something happened. But for this set of players. To be the same set of players that's you know eight weeks ago, whatever. It's, it's a transformation. The way we play, the way we approach games, and it's it's as if we've got eleven new players in, and that shows as it, whether it's confidence, organisation, whatever it is. It's just it's unbelievably good, <laughs> isn't it? It's um, it's, good. As you say, it's great to watch. You hear the way Terrell talks about Robbo and the players not- talk about him in the interviews. I'm coming more around to the thinking that he's like the Yoda of AFC Wimbledon, like holding up a football and saying, why do you, but things like that just amaze me. And with respect, but, Terrell isn't even in the team right at the moment because he's no. been injured or well, not injured, but sick. And for him to be, be speaking yeah. like he was. Mm. It's so genuine as well. You can feel it. It might absolutely right. You feel that, that warmth. And I also, I'm pretty sure Terrell's a massive Star Wars fan. So um, I think he'd like that, that, that quote. I wonder how he feels playing alongside Nesta with yeah. his Star Wars family yeah. history. But uh, yeah, no, it's true. Mark Robinson, the Yoda. Someone's got to mock that up again <laughs> on a T-shirt. <laughs> if we stay up, I'll make that happen. <laughs> if, if, huh. When? When? Yeah, when? Yeah. Yes, when? when. Yeah. Well, maybe yeah, that's that's probably a, a good way to to finish when when we stay up. And then, like Mark said, nice to be finishing a Sunday to looking forward to our next match. As in, yeah, right. Coming. So um, isn't that a lovely? Quick prick, quick prick. Sorry, quick quick match prediction from everyone. Amory, you first. Uh, in Terrell, I trust three 0 Wimbledon. <laughs> Matt, uh, four two us. But they will score first. Oh, there you go. Graham? 5 0 win, obviously. 5 0. 5, come on. Ding dong. <laughs> uh, I'm going to call a very, very open hitting the post 10 times during the match 1 0 win to us. Take that. And they're going to hit the post as much as we will. I think it's going to be a very nervous game, actually. I hope not. I'm going to be on the sofa. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna lock myself into a room and you know shut all the doors so that the kids don't wake up from me shouting, you know, at the screen and and and, and getting really emotionally invested. 
Yeah. The life of a Wimbledon fan. Exactly. That's what we do. Lovely to see you all. Lovely Likewise. to meet you, Matt, for the first time. You too, you too. Cool. Um, thanks, thanks very much. It's been fun. Yeah. See you later. Thank you also to the viewers. Uh, sorry I didn't go around to many questions. There weren't really many questions asked. Jane Lonsdale just said there were the, the Junior Don's letters were posted on the week of the 20th of March. There you go. I said a month or so ago. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you to all the viewers. And uh, come on, you Dons. Have a great week, uh, great start to the week. And uh, yeah, we'll see you anon. Take care, guys. Thank you. Cheers. Night. Bye. How do I stop this? <laughs> uh, right. I'm just going to end. Yep. Should we shoot off? Take care, yep. guys. See you.